It was the best of instruction sets. It was the worst of instruction sets. It was the age of VLIW. It was the age of RISC-V. It was the epoch of Zen. It was the epoch of 10 nanometer capacity problems. And so it was in this time that the FMA4 instruction set rose and fell. And this is the story of the hidden instruction set on Ryzen CPUs that's probably okay. Well, maybe okay, but probably broken. So what's an instruction set, and specifically FMA4? Well, x86 is a term that really describes a family of instruction sets. It all started with the Intel 8086, but over time, support for doing things faster and or less dumb ways were added to the CPU. So as not to break backward compatibility, the old ways were left and the new ways were added. And so, you know, you can imagine that it's been 30, 40 years, we've been adding stuff to the CPU, so a lot of stuff's been added. The easiest way to know what instruction sets your particular processor support is to just boot into Linux and cat slash proc slash CPU info. I mean, check it out for our Ryzen CPU, our Threadripper CPU actually, but works the same on Ryzen. So if you look at these, these are all the instruction sets that we have available. I mean, literally everything here, everything that we've got on the screen behind us, it's, it's just all of this. There's this a bunch of commands for how to do things on the CPU for different kinds of math. Now for Intel CPUs, I doubt that anybody at Intel even knows what all the instructions that are available are on like the Core i9, Core i7, the Xeon CPUs. And we've got a ton that are listed here. We've got MMX, SSE, SSE2, AES, AVX. There's a bunch of stuff here that's listed for this CPU to be able to do stuff. It's so complicated under the hood that actually a lot of these instructions, especially the older instructions, they're not even really there anymore. They're not executed verbatim. Uh, there's a thing called microcode that's running on the CPU. It's a little bit of a black box, but in some cases, it's translating certain x86 instructions that are part of some, you know, some instruction sets to other instruction sets. So uh, generally that translation tries to make it closer to uh, how the CPU actually is in hardware. It's really quite an interesting thing in and of itself, how microcode works and how much of a black box it is and how much we don't know what's really going on under the hood. But a lot of instruction sets, like MMX and SSE, were added to support faster operations, parallel memory operations, even before multi-core CPUs were really mainstream. And it really did help a lot with things like multimedia applications and games like Quake, because a single instruction could act on multiple pieces of data at once. And so that would, that would power a lot of acceleration that games like Quake enjoyed. But single instruction, multiple data, that's generally known as SIMD. And so we've been getting fancier and fancier about how we do that in engineering terms with the different kinds of CPU from both Team Red and, and Team Blue. So if you fast forward a bit and you've got all these instruction sets, you know, dozens of instruction sets, and each instruction set has potentially dozens of commands. So enter FMA4, which is what we're talking about today, just FMA4. And FMA4 on the new Zen microarchitecture from AMD, or the lack of FMA4 on the new Zen microarchitecture from AMD. So FMA4 is a very, very interesting state, it's, it, it, or non-state, I should say. And I just wanted to share my research about FMA4 on Zen. Now, before we talk about FMA4, we can talk about FMA3. Now, FMA3 was originally added to, uh, by AMD to their APUs in 2012, and that was after FMA4, which showed up on Bulldozer in 2011. Now, the three and four in FMA refer not to the version of the instruction set, like SSE and SSE2, it means the number of operands. So three for three operands, four for four operands. FMA is short for fused multiply add. And so anyone that's ever done any work with like electronics, digital signal processing, that kind of thing, probably will immediately recognize the benefit of combining a multiply add into a single instruction. It's, it's an accumulator, basically. It's like your cousin that hoards things that nobody in your family likes to talk about because they're fused multiply adding thing. Interestingly, FMA3 and FMA4 are not really compatible. So, I mean, it's a fused multiply add operation, but incompatible implementations. Now, Intel, Intel enters the picture here a little bit. Intel added support for FMA3 in 2013. But prior to this, AMD and Intel had different incompatible implementations 
of FMA instructions. So, and it's, a, it's a, even a little bit more complicated than that. But now on FMA3 on AMD CPUs, it is compatible with the FMA3 on Intel CPUs. And some games like Monster Hunter World actually use FMA3 in their DRM. Now folks using Sandy Bridge Xeon's older Intel CPUs have found this out the hard way, I think, because those older Intel CPUs don't support FMA3. So you can't play games like Monster Hunter World because they require FMA3, which seems pretty silly to me. I mean, it's a relatively recent instruction set. But, uh, well, anyway, enter Ryzen, based on AMD's new Zen microarchitecture. It's a brand new microarchitecture. And you start to realize the Herculean undertaking that AMD did when you look at all these listed instruction sets and you realize that Zen supports all these and they re-implemented them. It's not based on anything, you know, it doesn't inherit anything from Bulldozer. And remember that Bulldozer, at least later versions of Bulldozer, FMA4 was built into Bulldozer. And so Zen didn't really even exist a couple of years ago. So they did all this in a really short amount of time. That's it's fascinating. But if you look at Ryzen and supported instruction sets, FMA4 is out. It's not listed in the supported instruction sets on the CPU. The CPU has this list of instruction sets that are supported. I mean, it was there on the 8350. It's there in, in, on Bulldozer in general. It was there on APUs, APUs of all things. But on Zen, it's kaput, gone, XNAY, 86th, taking a bath with the fishes or concrete galoshes. Or is it? Is it in fact still there? It is actually, it's just hidden. The Ryzen and Threadripper CPUs don't advertise support for FMA4, but if you happen to run an FMA4 instruction anyway, you will get a result. You don't get a, a, an exception like invalid instruction. And if you test the instruction set, it does work at least a little on the Zen Plus CPUs that I tried. I was trying to generate an error. I didn't try it super hard, but I couldn't get to generate an error. But the people that I know that I asked about this report that the FMA instruction sets will actually produce errors in some scenarios. So. Now, curiously, when Raven Ridge launched, FMA4 was listed as a key feature on the AMD website of Raven Ridge. And so that turns out is a mistake in AMD's documentation. But a lot of other people, a lot of people that work to document CPUs or raced and picked that up. But yeah, FMA4 is not supported. Neither Zen nor Zen Plus nor future CPUs from AMD are going to have any FMA support in them from what I understand. And remember FMA4 came before FMA3, so honestly it's really not a big deal. It turns out that FMA4 is the fastest way to do linear algebra on Zen though. Wait, <laughs> you, wait, wait, back up. The FMA4 instruction set, which is not really supported, is the fastest way to do something? Well, it turns out, yeah, I mean, check it out. So huge thanks to Crazy Ape on the Level 1 Text Forums for helping me put these tests together in a head-to-head -head of FMA4 and AVX, which is another instruction set that offers similar functionality to FMA4, we were able to achieve 66.8 gigaflops of single precision 256-bit operations to 66.7 gigaflops with AVX. 128-bit AVX was quite a bit slower at around 42 gigaflops, but FMA4 held its own basically the same speed. Now, comparing the output here seemed identical, but FMA4 must be broken in some other way for it to be disabled like this. I mean, it really, you, you would think so, right? Here's an interesting side note. Remember when I said no one, even at Intel, really knows everything about the performance and instruction set support? I mean that, I really do. These things are insanely complicated pieces of silicon. If you said, hey Intel or AMD, can you tell me what is the fastest way to do this operation? There, there really isn't much documentation about that kind of stuff. Uh, so let's take a look at something called Open Blast, which is what we use for this test. Open Blast is really cool and it could do with a video of its own. It's basically a math library and that's what we used for this test. Now Blast stands for Basic Linear Algebra Subprograms. Linear algebra is at the foundation of machine learning, at least CPU bound machine learning and can be used as a building block for a lot of other stuff. You see, if you're doing machine learning and, and working on large data sets and that kind of thing, you can actually save a lot of time by compiling your program for the specific CPU that you have using whatever instruction sets it supports that are the fastest. But since it's not really documented which thing is the fastest on a particular CPU, at least not really, 
OpenBLAST experimentally finds which instruction set is fastest for doing its work. And honestly, if you go down the rabbit hole here, because of things like frequency scaling and performance governors and all the other stuff that goes into power saving, you know, what's fastest after running for an hour may not be the same as what's fastest for running for a 15 minute period. I mean, honestly, we could probably contemplate a future where GCC has a compiler optimization flag for thermal output or, or actual power usage or, or something like that because it's, a, it's sort of the wild, wild west. Well, anyway, this linear algebra library runs a bunch of tests on your CPU to figure out which instruction set is actually the fastest way for doing its linear algebra work, which honestly, I mean, that's, that's a story in and of itself. Maybe you would think a compiler would, you know, automatically do that when you specify a flag like mArch native, which will compile it for the CPU that it's running on. But no, in fact, it, it, compilers don't work that way. Normal program compilers like Visual Studio or GCC just simply don't do that. They really just target instruction sets. And the assumption is often that newer instruction sets are better. And usually the person who designed the compiler is the one making those assumptions, like which instruction sets are faster. And these, ins and these assumptions don't necessarily actually translate correctly over time, especially as the CPU family might evolve, like from Zen to Zen Plus, for example. So programs like OpenBLAST assume nothing. And that's a good thing if you're a research scientist and you want your program that's gonna run for 40 days to finish a day or two quicker. And that's, honestly, that's where we're headed. If x86 is still around in 20 or 30 years, imagine how many dozens more instruction sets are gonna exist. And so back to FMA4, the instruction set that partially works, maybe partially broken, and was built into Ryzen and Threadripper, perhaps because it's cool, or because, you know, maybe because of backward compatibility, but it's not actually listed as supported by the CPU, even though at least some of it is there, and some of it works, and maybe some of it doesn't. So my question is, do you think that this is the last time that we'll see an instruction set implemented in hardware, but not actually advertised as supported? I think the answer is no. I mean, when you talk about, you know, two, three, human generation lifetime support for x86 programs. I mean, you can still run ancient, ancient x86 programs on modern x86 CPUs. I mean, it's, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. There's gonna be stuff like this in the future. I mean, FMA4 was supported on Bulldozer, but it's no longer supported on, on Ryzen. It's there, but it's a secret. It's an entire instruction set hidden on your CPU. The machinery is there for it. It's like doing some renovation in your basement and finding an old World War II bunker. I mean, sure, the lead paint and the asbestos is fatal now, but, you know, it's pretty cool for quick trips down to the, the, the bunker just to hang out and marvel at what life was like in World War II. I mean, hey, it could be a free wine cellar, right? You can keep your Amontillado down there, right next to the FMA4 instruction set in your World War II bunker, because, yeah. I mean, discovering FMA4, uh, I did reach out to AMD, and I figured, since it was advertised heavily for Raven Ridge, that there was some bug or something that was fixed in Raven Ridge that existed on you know, launch day Ryzen. Maybe something related to the SegFault marginalization hardware bug, which is a thing that existed in first gen Ryzen for the people on Linux experience. But it turns out that it was a mistake that FMA4 was listed as a key feature for Raven Ridge. And like I say, just enough of FMA4 might have been implemented simply for compatibility with a popular program. I mean, imagine, some program like AutoCAD is like, if CPU is AMD, run this FMA4 stuff. Because some, I mean, I've seen dumber stuff in production and that's probably maybe connected to reality. Users would blame AMD for having a CPU that didn't work even though the CPU, even though the program was checking for, it was really the program's faults. Now, even though FMA4 is there, you probably shouldn't use it. It's just hanging out, waiting to say hello, like me on the level one forums. So I'm Wendell, I'm signing out and I will see you there. Oh, and big thanks to our patrons for making this video possible. This whole thing fascinates me and I'd like to do this you know, all day long if I could, but it's like instruction set archeology. span You never know what's lurking. And can you imagine CPUs 10, 20 years in the future? We're gonna be, it's like, oh wow, that turns out that's still there. They just don't advertise support for it anymore. I, can't, I mean, there's not, not really a lot you can do with it anyway, but it's just, it's fascinating. I mean, FMA4 is there but not really. So very, very interesting, very pragmatic way to, to get around programs that have dumb checks like if AMD run FMA4 without actually checking if FMA4 is there. But I've seen dumber, so 
Anyway, catch you guys later.